Hey, Sunset Collective, how you doing? Hey. What's up, Josh? Hey, Josh. Glad to see y'all. And uh, for those folks joining us out there all across the nation and maybe all across the world, welcome to our fourth Sun Sing in Place, Artivism Virginia online concert. We are thrilled to have you with us and we hope that everyone out there is safe, healthy, and sane. And we are doing our best to stay the same over here in our respective locations. So uh, we have a wonderful concert lined up here for you. We've got a ton of special guests, guest artivists, leaders from the work to defeat the Mountain Valley and Atlantic Coast pipelines. And we've got a call to action as well. So I hope you can stick with us through the entire program. These concerts are occurring every other Thursday night and make sure to check out our Facebook page for Artivism Virginia for our additional street sing workshops on alternating Thursdays. So I'm going to introduce you here to the Sun Sing Collective, my bandmates. We've got Lainey Sullivan coming to us from Richmond, Virginia. We're also going to have Holy River on the program with us. We've got Kay Ferguson, co-director of Artivism Virginia in Charlottesville. We've got Gabe Gavin also coming to us from Charlottesville, Virginia. He's the bass player and hand percussion guy in the Sunset Collective. We have our beloved drummer, Camera Harris, coming to us from deep in the south side of Virginia, Martinsville. We have our multi-talented vocalist, keyboardist, multi-instrumentalist, Emily Blankenship Tucker, and Silas coming to us all the way from Ferrum in Franklin County. The Sunbus maestro himself and man of many talents, Graham Smith White, our technical director for Artivism. Mm. And Miss Bernadette BJ Lark joining us from Roanoke, Virginia. Thanks you all so much for being with us and we hope you enjoy the program. Y'all ready? Hey. Let's go. All right, let's do this. And let's get right to it. Thanks so much for joining us again for our Sun Sing in Place online concert series from Artivism. I'm Joshua Vanna, co-director of Artivism and musical director for the Sun Sing Collective. We've got a terrific program lined up, so I hope you stick with us. Um, I have been staying at home here since mid-March in Abermarle County and trying to stay healthy and sane. Uh, luckily, I've been able to play a lot of music remotely with my bandmates from the Sun Sing Collective and uh, some of that you might hear this evening. So our first guest for the evening is the powerful Richmond duo Holy River featuring Lainey Sullivan of the Sun Sing Collective and her partner Jameson Price and you can learn more about their music at holyrivermusic.com so take it away hey everyone hope you're doing well we're going to play some songs in this greenhouse um, which has been one of our quarantine projects finishing it up and uh, hopefully during the song we'll be able to show you some some excerpts from our garden at Earth Boat Collective too so hope you're doing well and this song is about the summer and the growing season and all the things
Thank you so much, Laney and Jameson. And for more on Holy River, you can visit holyrivermusic.com. Our second musical guest this evening for Sun Sing in Place is Rachel Eddy. Rachel is a native of West Virginia, having grown up in a musical family steeped in the Appalachian traditions of music and dance. Now based in Alexandria, Virginia, Rachel is known throughout the world as both a dynamic, emotionally powerful performer and an engaging and thoughtful teacher. Rachel's soulful singing and multi-instrumental finesse, including fiddle, banjo, guitar, and mandolin, may be heard on numerous solo and collaborative recordings, as well as at dances and jam sessions, where Rachel is dedicated to fostering community and sharing the love of music with others. Rachel, thanks so much for being with us. I'm so happy to be here participating in this Artivism online concert series. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Rachel Liddy, and I'm going to sing the song called Mannington Number no. 9. It was written by Keith McManus, who is a fiddler and friend that I knew growing up in Morgantown, West Virginia. Um, he wrote the song about the second largest coal mine disaster that happened in my home state of West Virginia in 1969. It killed 78 men. Many of them were not recovered, so the, the mine was sealed shut and um, became their tomb and their resting place. And uh, yeah, so I grew up just kind of over the hill from Mannington and Farmington, and I didn't know about this mine disaster for, for a long time, but I do remember going through that area and seeing all these really lovely big houses, so much nicer than and bigger than the ones that, you know, I, I grew up in and wondering why they were sitting there empty, you know, and, and as a kid, I didn't understand uh, the implications of a mine disaster and how it wipes out entire communities of people. And, and um, that place is, it still exists. Obviously, there are people living there, but... Um, it was one of the largest mines in the area, and it definitely was devastating in many ways, not just the loss of life, but loss of economy. And um, uh, the only good that came out of it, obviously, is that a lot of protections for miners came of that, and it was definitely used um, to, to propel miners' rights and workers' rights during that time. So the song is called Mannington Number no. 9. And... Um... <laughs> I tuned my banjo before I said all that, I swear. Thank you. 
I'm coming to you from Alexandria, Virginia today. This is my studio basement that um, I've done a lot of teaching in and, until most recently. And so I've turned it into a bit of a, a stage with my festival tapestries and all my instruments around. So welcome to my home and um, thanks for having me. Rachel, thank you so much for that wonderful tune. And if you'd like to learn more about Rachel Eddy and her music, please visit racheleddymusic.com. Next up, we'd like to welcome our good friend Richard Averett, who is a businessman and affected landowner in the path of the proposed Atlantic Coast Pipeline in Nelson County, Virginia. With his characteristic clarity, passion, and understanding, Richard will shine a light on the bizarre injustices of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or known as the FERC, and their use of tolling orders and eminent domain. Richard, thanks so much for joining us. Hello, my name is Richard Averett. I am a landowner in Nelson County, Virginia, and I am standing in front of the future proposed path of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, just about 25 yards behind me here. In fact, all of the trees around us in this moment would be gone if they were to build this project. And I've been asked to talk to you today about tolling orders and eminent domain. And I just want to caveat to say, I'm not an attorney. Everything I'm going to tell you is my interpretation of, of the law and from what I've learned based on six years of fighting my way through the world's most obtuse process that is our Federal, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. So, a tolling order. A tolling order is a very specific instrument used by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to defer the decision around rehearing a case. And so let me back up and explain what that means. When, when FERC issues the Certificate of Public Convenience and Necessity, they are giving the pipeline company the right to proceed with a project. Now that certificate might be conditioned on many other permits, which frankly I think we shouldn't do, but with it in that moment comes the power of eminent domain, right? That's the power to take your land. Your remedy in that moment as a landowner, if you say, hey, I think you've made the wrong decision, you only have one remedy. And that is a, a sort of regulatory remedy. You have to first appeal to FERC and say, hey, I think you made the wrong decision. Please rehear this case. And by law, FERC has 30 days to make the decision, will we rehear the case or not? And to be clear, that's not a decision about whether or not they're going to overturn their earlier decision. It's just, are we going to take this rehearing case or not? And if not, then you are allowed to proceed to the courts. So FERC doesn't like that. They don't want to make that decision that quick. And so in almost every single pipeline case over the past decade, a landowner has appealed for rehearing and FERC has issued what's called a tolling order. And that is this workaround they've created, which says we will approve your request for rehearing, but only to decide later if we'll actually rehear the case on the merits. And what does this do to a landowner? Well, at that point, the pipeline company has the power of eminent domain. And the courts have extended that power to include something called quick take or a preliminary injunction. 
And that is meaning the pipeline company goes to the courts and says, hey, we want to take this guy's land, but we can't agree on the value and all the terms. And the court says, well, no worries. We won't hold you up for three or four years. We'll give you the right to take the land now and you can sort out the price later. So for a landowner, you want to go to the courts and stop that. You want to say, hey, I want to stay. I don't want them cutting trees. But the courts will say, I'm sorry, sir, we can't hear your case because FERC, you have to exha have exhausted your regulatory processes first. You have to have FERC deny your request for rehearing. But FERC didn't deny your request for rehearing because they issued a tolling order. So instead, they will sit, FERC will sit on that tolling order for 90 days, 180 days, often over a year. And so the net effect for a landowner is that they completely take away your right to due process. You can't go to the courts and get a stay. You can't get FERC to take action. You're stuck in limbo. Meanwhile, the pipeline company has the right to take your land, cut your trees, dig a trench, lay the pipe, right? It is an extraordinary uh, abuse of the intent of the law, even if it adheres to the letter of the law. And it's something that we have to fix. It is the kind of thing that when citizens like us see it, you can't believe it can be true. So the combination of a tolling order plus eminent domain plus, plus quick take completely erodes a citizen's rights, not only to preserve their land, but even to preserve the argument about whether or not someone should have the right to take their land for one of these projects. So I hope that helps explain it. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. Richard, thank you so much for speaking to your struggle and the struggle of so many citizens out there trying to protect their communities and livelihoods from the FERC as well as the ACP. If you'd like to learn more about the FERC and the fight against the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, please check out the links below. Next up, we'd like to, we're going to feature a song that I wrote, which uh, I'm lucky to have my bandmate Gabe Gavin from the Sunsing Collective uh, collaborate with me remotely. And uh, Gabe is a Charlottesville musician who is also a member of the Bhakti Boys and the Positive Collective. And if you'd like to check out their music, we also have their links in the description. So the song is called Gone Tomorrow, and it is named after the book Gone Tomorrow, The Hidden Life of Garbage by Heather Rogers which is a great read. I hope you check it out. Hey everyone, this is Gabe coming to you from my home studio in Abbey, which is my social distancing headquarters. As always, we hope that you and yours are well, staying safe and healthy and sane. And we thank you for joining us and tuning in for the Sun Singing Place. Uh, this week I get to collaborate on a song with my brother Josh called Gone Tomorrow. Hope you enjoy it and stay well. One, two. something to you and then I go away well I ain't more than nothing I got nothing to say so I'm gone tomorrow I'm gone away I think I want to hide dig a hole in the ground it just seem like no Ever wants me around You just use me up And then you burn me down Now I'm sitting here rotting Rotting on the edge of town You know I used to be new You know I used to be nice Remember when we met You know you didn't think twice I guess I lost my charm 
I guess I lost my shine Now I ain't worth your memory I ain't worth your time And I'm tired of sitting Sitting on the shelf Tired of being wasted All by myself Think I want to turn Into something else Don't want to go to waste Don't want to go to hell So I'm gone tomorrow Just here today Just something to Thanks so much, Gabe, for joining me remotely on that song, Gone Tomorrow. And uh, it's a bit of a love letter from a little bit of garbage to us human beings. And again, please check out the book, Gone Tomorrow, The Hidden Life of Garbage by Heather Rogers. Really excited for the next piece of our program here. We have a remote collaboration from Graham Smith White, Artivism's technical director, and Camry Harris, uh, the Sunsing Collective 
beloved drummer. Graham, in addition to being our technical director, is the co-creator of The Sun Bus, and his music project is The Sunrise Review. You can check that out at solarpoweredmusic.com. You can check out all the things that Camry does at Camry Drummer Harris on Facebook, and he's coming to us this evening from Martinsville, Virginia. Hey everybody, Graham Smith-White coming to you here from Charlottesville, Virginia. I've been sheltering here since mid-March. Being well, staying safe. I'm going to be doing some instrumental and spoken word material with my bandmate Camry from the Sunsing Collective. I hope you enjoy. Water is life. Think of your life without clean water. What would your life be like without loved ones that help us stand taller and a land we can freely walk across without fear of it being bothered or destroyed? Reaching our arms towards the sun to feel the warm rays that heat our skin from within. Chains dragging. You can hear them beating the ground if you listen closely. The sweat dripping off my brow with much emotion. As we wrap our hearts and souls around these trees and we build our homes within these leaves, you will not, you will not divide us. Thanks to all the ones who stood and stand by us in hopes, sure hopes, we never have to let go of what is rightfully ours. We have owned this land our whole life. Who are you to tell us what we will do with this pipeline. Who are you to tell us what you will do with this pipeline? We are in our right mind, so we will continue to fight, even if it means we walk the line of being close to dying for this life. We believe in so strongly that one day, the wrongs will be made right. And we can make this world a better place for us all. So we stand tall in solidarity. With nothing but love in our hearts. gotta make this right. This has to be made right. Can't be taking too much longer.
we wrap our hearts and souls around these trees and we build our homes within these leaves you will not divide us Thanks so much, Graham and Camry. Next up, we're delighted to be joined by Ash Devine, who is an Appalachian singer, songwriter, musician, program designer, ukulele teacher, and social activist originally from Blacksburg, Virginia. Ash has a graduate degree in gerontology and is influenced by her travels with Patch Adams. She has developed and implemented numerous arts-based programs for intergenerational groups such as the Adult Daycare Community Folk Choir. Ash, thank you so much for being with us. Hello, this is Ash Devine, and I'm broadcasting from Southwestern Virginia, Blacksburg, Virginia, down in the Ellet Valley, not far from Elliston, where the Yellowfinch uh, Mountain Valley Pipeline Resistance Tree Sit is located. Uh, this is the place of my birth, and I'm so honored and in awe of the beauty here this spring and summer. Uh, it's a whole new experience for many of us right now with the sheltering in place and um, loss of jobs and loved ones in some cases. So I chose a song today to share with you called The Music of Healing and it's written by Tommy Sands, an Irish folk songwriter. And this song is about staying resilient with the strength of our hearts uh, through any situation, including brutality or extreme loss or um, change that we weren't prepared for. So I hope you enjoy it. This is called The Music of Healing. And the song goes, if you'd like to sing along, Oh, the hearts of wonder, stronger than the guns of thunder, even when we're torn asunder, love will come again. Hopefully this willow will give me a chance to sing the song. Maybe it wants to sing with me. <laughs> okay. Don't beat the drum, it frightens the children. Don't sing the songs about winning and losing. Sit down beside me, the green fields are bleeding. Sing me the music of healing. Sing me a song of a lover returning. The darker the night, the nearer the morning. Bring me the news of a new day that's dawning. Sing me the music of healing. Oh, the hearts of wonder, stronger than the guns of Sometimes the truth is like a hair in the cornfield. You know that it's there, but you can't put your arms round it. All you can hope for is to follow its footsteps. Sing me the music of healing. Who would have thought I could be so contented to learn I was wrong after all of my rambles? I learned to be hard and I learned to be humble. Sing me the music of healing. Oh, wonder, stronger than the guns of thunder, even when we're torn asunder, love will come again. Somehow the cycle of vengeance keeps turning Tell each other sorrows and songs we start learning Peace is the prize for those who are daring Sing me the music of healing Time is your friend, it'll cure all your sorrows But how can we wait for another tomorrow? One step today and a thousand will follow Sing me the music of healing Stronger than the guns of thunder, even when we're torn asunder, love will come again. Sing with me. Oh, the hearts of 
thank you so much for your song and thanks for joining us on Sun Sing in Place. If you'd like to hear more of Ash's music, please visit ashdivine.net. You can also check out her Patreon page at patreon.com slash ashdivine. Next, we're thrilled to be joined by Amelia Williams, who is a Nelson County, Virginia resident who has been working with the regional No Pipeline movement since 2014. She has created several works of both outdoor and indoor installation art and poetry in protest of MVP and ACP. Most recently, a collaborative artwork of braided fabric called The Ties That Bind. This piece is comprised of over 200 fabric braids made by more than 60 individuals in affected communities in Virginia and neighboring states. Amelia, thanks for being with us. I'm Amelia Williams, and I live in Nelson County, Virginia. Since I learned about the proposed fracked gas Atlantic Coast Pipeline in 2014, and later about the proposed Mountain Valley Pipeline, I have been working with those who are trying to stop these travesties and protect the water, land, and air in threatened communities. This has included making art and poetry installations on threatened land and in collaboration with affected communities and landowners. The following poem is part of a sequence entitled Idiosyncratic Attachments, which is forthcoming in Rabbit, a journal of nonfiction poetry. The poem includes the following epigraph. The Ties That Bind is a community-made installation of fabric braids in protest of two fracked gas pipelines proposed for Virginia. Entwined, braid our scraps of fabric, strands twined around their kin, fluffed knit scarf clasps damask green of an old curtain, Oma's flax shirt. Here a blue spine, notch admitting rivulet rill, flumes of air, sports penatifid bows where we tie on a new strip of silk. Flounces commune with shiny sleeves, an unchained melody hums through the threads twined like fox grape and green briar climbing up toward light. We are tied to these mountains rooted by choice where the black snake may slither, threat named by elders who have seen it all before, dark petrochemical trail. Watch our colorful braided coil unhinge its jaw, swallow. Thank you. Amelia, thank you so much. For our viewers who would like to learn more about Amelia's work, please visit wildlink.net. And next up we have a very exciting collaboration with a couple of our very special guests and also featuring a member of the Sunsing Collective, Miss Emily Blankenship Tucker, a musician of many talents, and also featuring her wife and bandmate, Rachel Blankenship Tucker. They're coming to us from Ferrum in Franklin County, Virginia. Hey everybody, Emily and Rachel here. We're so glad that you joined us again this week for the Sun Sing In Place concert. We're really happy to be here making music for you. And we're joining you again from our home in Ferrum, Virginia. And just want to give a shout out to everybody who is making choices that are in the best interest of the wellness of the community, making choices that are in the best interest of the wellness of your families. Even if that means staying home when others seem to be venturing out, we are really concerned about the decision making that is leading to more community interaction and, uh, and just hanging in there with all of you who are, are resisting that. 
Yeah, and, and I'd just also like to say, I know it might be hard when you see the photographs and people hanging out with their friends and going to the beach and on vacation, but uh, try to resist that because it's not smart and it's selfish. And uh, I can speak, this has directly affected my family. Uh, on May the 1st, my mom came down with symptoms of COVID and she went to the doctor and got tested. And um, it took her several days to get her results back, but she tested positive for COVID-19. And thankfully she had a mild case, but I can't begin to explain to you how difficult it is to learn that your family member has COVID and not know what the outcome will be. Um, she just found out today actually that she's, uh, she's out, of the, out of trouble. She's um, clear of COVID and we're thankful for that, but please keep it in mind, it's not, it's not worth it. Obviously staying home has affected our work as musicians. Uh, but we have had some opportunities to do some really cool collaborating and, and some really interesting um, learning experiences have come out of that. And so it is my great pleasure to welcome our guests for tonight. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, Rachel Eddy and Emily Hammond. Um, Rachel was on earlier in the program, but Emily is, um, has multi -talents, many talents and wears many hats. Uh, they are the uh, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs at George Washington University and specialize in environmental law, energy law, and administrative law. And they also happen to be a wonderful musician and dancer. And Emily was gracious enough to join us on the bass for this next tune. Hi, I'm Rachel and this is Emily. And we're really excited to be playing this song together with Rachel and Emily. This is Swing and Turn by Jean Ritchie. It's all out on the new railroad, it's all out on the sea, it's all out on the new railroad, as far as I can see, swing and turn, jubilee, live and learn, jubilee, swing and turn, jubilee, live and learn, jubilee. The hardest work I
Thanks so much. Thank you, thank you, Emily and Rachel, and Emily and Rachel for that wonderful performance. If you'd like to hear more where that came from, please visit racheleddymusic.com and afterjackband.com. And now it is time for our Sun Sing in Place action alert. So listen up. We are thrilled to be joined by our good friend, Maury Johnson from Monroe County, West Virginia. Maury is a former educator, a semi-retired farmer, and a severely impacted landowner in the path of the Mountain Valley Pipeline. His years-long work to defeat MVP has been tireless, and it's his belief that fighting MVP, ACP, and other projects of the like is part of a crucial struggle for environmental, social, and civil justice. He's thankful for all of the friends and allies that he's met over the last five years from the region, the Virginias, North Carolina, and all across the nation while getting involved fighting this pipeline. And Maury is a constant reminder that if we just stay in this unified and don't give up, that we will win. Maury is a member of the executive board for the Power Coalition and is going to talk to us a little bit about a call to action. Thanks for joining us, Maury. Hello, folks from Monroe County, West Virginia. This is your friend, Maury. My aunt is doing this video. She's about 20 feet down the hill so I can take this mask off. Hope everybody is staying safe and that you're practicing social distancing and everybody stays well. So here from Monroe County, um, along the MVP pipeline across the farm, as you can see the horrible destruction of the pipe and the rocks have been laid here for about a year. Uh, we're here with our Sun Sing friends, uh, concert tonight. They're doing a great service for everybody. I just wanted to come and talk to you a second about um, recently myself and uh, Richard Averts over in Nielsen County had an opportunity to talk to Jamie Raskins, the Adela a congressman from Maryland, about the eminent domain and the tolling orders, something that is totally a civil injustice. This is something that should not happen. We appreciate all of your efforts to help us and everybody needs to continue. Don't rest. We got to continue to fight these pipelines. They will not be built if we continue our pressure. Uh, as you can see that there's a, a we'll call action here. We want you to go to the uh, network. I got it written on my action network link. I wouldn't want to forget the action network link that's on the video here. Be sure to go click that, see how you can help take action. We're doing fine here in Monroe County. Good place to be isolated here up this valley. Uh, everybody from the West Virginia wants to say hello to all of our Virginia friends and people across the country. And thank you for all that you're doing. The wonderful musicians and other people that are fighting these injustices, pipelines, and, and fighting for climate change. And I want to give a shout out for my friends in the Keystone who provided me with these signs and the solar network here in West Virginia. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Maury, for being with us. And again, folks, please find that Action Network link below in the description and contact your representative about the abuses of FERC. We need your voice. Thank you so much for hopping on board. Next up, we are going to feature a new video that was produced in collaboration with friend of Artivism, Ted Day of Lights and Years Productions. And Ted is going to bring us in. Hi, I'm Ted Day, the director of Fire on the Mountain, the short documentary you're about to watch. This project is really dear to my heart. Uh, we put a lot of work into it. I hope it'll change some perspectives and I hope it will also empower perspectives that are already in line with the thesis of the film. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope everyone's staying safe and well. This is the largest pipeline ever put in the ground. If this blows, 
everything's dead in two and a half miles. That includes all my family, my neighbors, the animals. And I, I've told people before that my greatest fear is that I'll be in town when it blows. And I'll have to be the survivor of this. You've got this huge shale oil field that you're, you're extracting gas from. They've got a 42 inch high pressure pipeline that has 90 degree bends in it. And you don't do that with an eight inch pipeline because they'll just blow themselves apart. When they came through and cut my trees, It was like a knife in the heart for every tree that I heard fall. My tree sits right here. This is where I lived for 34 days. Had my drywall bucket on the side with a toilet seat. I had my food over here. I had not much else. Yellow tape and workers surround the makeshift treehouse of a 61-year-old protester called Red. The Mountain Valley Pipeline. It's a shell company. It's a stack of paperwork. Should anything go wrong with this pipeline, they'll cease to exist in however long it takes to write up the paperwork to dissolve a company. And then they will not be held responsible for anything because they will no longer exist. When they announced the pipeline coming through, it was just it was just such a kick in the teeth. And it's just this feeling like like they're they're snatching up all these beautiful places because it's easy. I don't think they really understood how much disruption and uh, suffering they're gonna to bring to people up here and how people up here are pretty banded together and they're not gonna stand up for it. We went, nobody's that stupid. Nobody is that stupid to go through these steep mountains in this hard rock, through all these wetlands, all this water, and we laughed. And we really didn't take them seriously until the surveyors came. So there's a tiny little detail in the fact that Roanoke Gas is a like 0.1% owner of this pipeline. And because Roanoke Gas is part of it, they can now claim that it's part of a utility which allowed the eminent domain. I told Miner, I said, I've got the month off. I'm going to build me a tree stand. So she said, I'm with you, Mom. And I guess we were watching. The news was on, and they were talking about the tree sits at the Appalachian Trail with Nutty. And Ray was sitting there, and she's like, you know, I can do that. And Miner's like, well, Mom, if you can, I will too. They started planning it. They got people involved. They went up in the trees. We had never been to another tree set. We were clueless. I wasn't expecting the cops to surround me. I had two MVP guards, two Roanoke County cops, and two state police 24-7. They taped me off, and nobody was allowed to pass anything up to me and they were gonna starve me out. Roanoke County caved and we were told that we would be delivered meals. And those meals turned out to be two bologna sandwiches, two cookies, a bag of juice, and that was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so after I got out of the trees, I mailed our governor a bologna sandwich every day. I hope he ate the motherfuckers. This is our home. You can't come in and take away people's home, property, and farms and not expect people to resist. We rallied people, and I would spend my time in the tree all over again. It was worth it.
they don't want you to band together. Because once you band together, once you become a force, you realize that there's a, this whole big community of people that are also opposed to these pipelines. I don't like being walked all over, and I've never liked being walked all over. I wasn't going to let them walk all over us. For more from Lights and Years, please visit them on Vimeo. And of course, for more stories of the struggle against the Mountain Valley and Atlantic Coast pipelines, please visit Artivism Virginia on Facebook, Vimeo, YouTube, and Instagram. Closing out the music this evening for our Sunsing in Place program will be Sunsing Collective member Bernadette B.J. Lark. BJ is a powerful vocalist, originally from South Carolina. She is an educator, a mother, and an activist, and she shows up in a big way. We really hope you enjoy this performance. Hello, I am BJ, and thank you for joining us as we continue to make safety priority. I'm here at home in Roanoke, Virginia with my family, and I hope all is well with you and your loved ones. Tonight, I'll be singing Keep Your Eyes on the Prize, which simply means to remain focused on achieving a positive end result without being distracted by problems or setbacks. We're in this together. Be encouraged. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on, I got my hand on the plow, won't take nothing for my journey now, keep your eyes on the prize, hold on, hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on. I got my mind made up. I know that we're gonna win. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on. Freedom's name is mighty sweet, and soon one day there'll be victory. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on. Bless you. 
Thank you all so much for joining us for another installation of Sunsing in Place, our online concert series from Artivism, Virginia, from myself and the rest of the Sunsing Collective. We hope you all out there are safe, healthy, and sane. And we'd like to invite you to learn more about the work of Artivism, Virginia by visiting us on Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, and Instagram. And also, would like to invite you to join us next week, Thursday, May 28th, for our next Street Sing workshop. So check that out on Facebook. To everyone out there, love and thanks. Thank you once again to all of our wonderful special guests and guest artivists. Y'all rock. We will see you again soon. Take care, y'all.